Hey guys, it's Sammy Warrior, the host of the Successful Millennials Podcast. I appreciate you joining in and listening to another episode geared towards proactive and driven millennials born from 1990 to 1997. For those of you who are first-time listeners, welcome. This podcast is specifically geared towards those people born in 1990 to 1997 and are trying to find motivation as well as improve some tactics of how to achieve success in the five major categories. I invite you to listen into the journey as I do deep dives as well as bring in some emerging experts to discuss these categories in our experiences and how to make progress with them. The reason I picked this specific age range is because I wanted to highlight the rise of social media and smartphones technology coming up in the formative years rather than as an established adult. Myself being a millennial in that age range, I was in high school when social media really took off as well as the iPhone and that changed the way we we grew up almost Uh, whereas generations who are born outside of that age range either was too young and was born into it or they were already an adult and kind of fully developed so what are these five categories in no specific orders of importance it's money happiness career slash purpose relationships and that covers intimate familial and social as well as health and that's physical and mental health Guys, I would love it if you can give me a review or DM me on Instagram at FinanceZilla or email me at FinanceZilla at gmail.com. I would love to hear your feedback as well as things that you, topics that you'd like to learn more on or things that I can do better. I am a big, big fan, as you probably have realized by listening to a few of these episodes of continuous improvement. So, Anything that you guys would like to learn more on or things that I could do better on, please, please let me know. And if you could share it with just one friend who you think that one of these episodes can help them with, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much. Now, let's get to the show. doing well can't wait for this conversation i feel like we're gonna we're gonna learn a lot but tell yeah exactly tell the audience a little bit about yourself for those who don't know you i know we spoke obviously many times before this but tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your journey okay so my name is hamza um i'm about to turn 27 years old end of this year i'm currently a fitness and transformation instructor i work as an online coach and uh one-to-one personal trainer. I have my own uh, supplement business, first uh, supplement line that produces locally here in Jordan. And uh, I'm currently working on opening my own business and and transforming people's lives. Previously, I was an engineer. So I graduated in 2015 with an industrial engineering degree. Worked for that with that degree for a couple of years, maybe four years. And then I decided to switch careers into something that I'm more, you know, passionate about. And yeah, here we are. Yeah, and that ties in beautifully to this podcast because we talk about career and purpose as one of the pillars of of categories of success because money isn't everything, even though that may be what you started out in your career. And I did data analytics, but no longer in there as well. Chasing your passion and making money on that has, I'm sure, done extreme wonders on your mental health and your overall happiness. But how... How did you find the gym and working out and developing this love for the fitness industry? Now, we're going to go back to 2013, which is where I started working out. Now, uh, when, I, when I started, it was the first year that I was in college in, in the UK. And uh, honestly, I started for a completely different reason at the time. I was just growing up. I was a very skinny kid. And I was, because I'm around five foot 11, mm-hmm. five, no, sorry, five foot nine. And I was weighing around 55, 56 kg at that time. So I was extremely skinny, mm-hmm. uh, very unhealthy, you know, just eating junk food, you know, smoking, drinking, all that kind of stuff, you know, going into university. All and right. um, once I got there, because of, you know, the change of the weather, the weather in the UK is very cold. Mm-hmm. And the cold there is just different than here. So, so for some reason, my body just didn't adapt to it quickly. And I ended up, you know, getting sick and taking a lot of medicine, a lot of antibiotics, and it would just stay there for like two weeks. 
Wow. Minimum. Yeah. And I was just throw myself on the bed. I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything, you know, and then I would get better for like one, two weeks. Mm -hmm. Then it would hit me again. So that shows that my immunity system is <laughs> down the ground. Right. Right. So I was like, okay, I had to sit with myself and like, oh man, look at you. What, what are you doing, man? What, what, what's happening? You need to fix this. And I was like, okay, I need to join a gym. I was in a town called Loughborough and uh, it's basically, um, it's more of a sports university. It does have many different, you know, top degrees like in engineering and business management, stuff like that. But it's known in the UK for being the number one university in sports science in general. So mm -hmm. it's a very kind of, you know, athletic environment. And to a point that, because I was living in the city center at, the, at that time, mm -hmm. and I never lived inside the university campus. Right. And in the university campus, there was a couple of gyms. And outside, there was just like many more gyms as well. So it's just every three to four minute walk, you'd find a gym. So <laughs> the, the closest one to me was like a two minute walk. Nice. So I basically, I didn't have any excuses whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So uh, a friend of mine, who we, we also graduated here from the same school from Jordan, we lived at the same apartment and uh, he was more into martial arts, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And he found out this gym that's close by does give classes. So I was like, okay, let's go. And uh, I'm going to start, you know, uh, working on myself and seeing how, how, how well I can do with my health and, and body and stuff. And you can go and do your martial arts. And we were doing that at the, at the start and basically motivating each other to go. And I started, you know, looking at what I needed to fix my health and my immune system and work from there. So I started learning about, you know, reading about nutrition, what I have to do to improve my immunity, what I have to do to gain a little bit of weight. And at that time, 2013, the, the vape, you know, the electronic cigarette was just starting to come out. It was yeah. just at the time, it was just like one, you just have to press a button. It's like a tank. There's no like voltage mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I, I bought one, you know, and started with like a higher nicotine level and then started tapering down, down, down until it's a zero nicotine. And within, you know, a couple of weeks, I was, okay, yeah, now I stop, I'm good to go. Because uh, I realized something at the time. It doesn't take it as much as people think it needs to stop a bad habit or to build a new habit. Mm. Because, you know, for me, it took me probably three to four weeks to stop completely. Wow. And it took me three to four weeks to get into the gym lifestyle, getting used to it. And then like, okay, now I'm good. It's part of my day. And I just went from there. So I started learning and reading and gaining weight and trying different things on myself, you know, reading podcasts, uh, sorry, listening to podcasts, reading articles. At the time, there was a website called bodybuilding.com, mm -hmm. which had like, uh, you know, all the information, different yeah. plans. It was it was for free at the time. Yeah. So I would just go in and I would start a plan. You know, it would, usually it's like a six to 12 week plan. Mm -hmm. I'll try it out, see what I learn, go on the diets. And obviously you would go with like the kind of person, you know, the, the, the role model who's in there because you think, oh, OK, I'm going to try this. I'm going to look like him. Right. Yeah, of and, course. You know, obviously, that, that's not the case. But I remember I I, um, I followed a plan for Steve Cook, who's a famous fitness influencer. And then I tried different things at the time. And, you know, probably two years into it, I gained, you know, over 20, 30 kilos. Wow. And I kept on eating and eating and eating. Uh, it was the wrong thing to do because I was eating way over what I needed. But my health did improve. I felt better overall, but I was gaining a lot of weight and quickly. So I started powerlifting back then because my gym was, there was like a powerlifting team. Mm -hmm. It's like, like a small community. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. Let's go and try this out. So I built a foundation around powerlifting and applied, you know, the diets and stuff into it. And all I cared about is gaining weight. So within the first four years of training, probably reached 105 kilo. That was the maximum. Wow. So that's like... 50 kilo difference yeah now so obviously i pounds. was exactly now obviously i was big mm -hmm. but you know i was probably like 30 something percent body fat which is mm -hmm. you know now i was I, I became healthy and then i became unhealthy by being you know mm -hmm. overweight now so we're like 2016 now and i was like okay no i'm not gonna stay like this i already graduated came back here Obviously, here powerlifting is not a big thing in Jordan. So I was like, okay, you know, I'm not really interested in this anymore. I want to try something new. Mm -hmm. I want to lean down and I want to see how my body looks when it's lean. It took right. me one whole year to try different types of diets, uh, carb cycling, keto diet, intermittent fasting, you name it. I tried it mm -hmm. all. And I've seen the effect. And I was like documenting and putting the weights and everything that, like, oh, okay, this did this, this did that, you know. 
And then by the end of that year, I went down to like 70 something kilos. I did do a lot of mistakes. I could have done it in a much healthier way, right. a smarter way as well. But, you know, I was doing it to learn on myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, there wasn't anyone who was, you know, teaching me. I didn't have a coach at the time. I yeah. had a coach when, when, you know, when I was powerlifting, but he was the coach for like the whole team. So it's not right. like, you know, one-to-one coaching and stuff like that. From there, I, I was like, okay, I want to compete in a different... I was planning to compete in powerlifting, and then I realized, no, this is not for me. I was like, oh, I want to compete in bodybuilding, in men's physique. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, let, let me try a show. We had the local show here, and in the same year, we had the first time that we ever did an Olympia amateur here in Jordan. Nice. So it was like a, a big thing, a big deal. I was like, okay, yeah, this is nice. I didn't know at the time that it was, you know, a challenging. I need to have, you know, years of experience and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to try. So I tried, you know, competing here locally. I had a coach at the time placed within the top 10. Okay, cool. That's Let's awesome. take it further. Let's go and uh, do the Mr. Olympia amateur. We did that, also top 10. And then I was like, I love this. Mm-hmm. I love say. I love the process. I love seeing my body change. And I love the feeling of standing on stage and presenting something artistic. So I kept going with that. And I realized how much this thing affected me and impacted my life. Because I was working at the time. So I had a full-time job. And it's fine. I used to wake up very early because my work used to start at 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. So in order for me to do my cardio, prepare my meals, I used to wake up at 4 a.m., you know, prep, do my cardio, prep my meals, shower, everything, and then be at work at 7 some days I finish at 6, some days I finish at 7 p.m. I finish, I go to the gym, get all my meals with me, done, go back home, sleep, repeat. So that was just a cycle. Not much into like the social life because you need to sacrifice a lot for the sport, but we'll get into that. But I realized how much it impacted me mentally more than just physically. So I was always right. happy that there was something to look forward to in the day. I was always putting high standards for myself and expecting to achieve them. To achieve them. And this, this sport specifically it takes a lot of time. So the patience you build with the discipline that you put into it is just insane. So it made me strong in a way that whatever I have to tackle, you know, it's just easy. Whatever I have to put on my mind, I know... Oh, it's going to take time? No problem. I need to put effort into it? No problem. You know, so it became so much easier. And then in 2017, I started taking in clients. People used to see my my transformation. They're like, oh, man, you know what? I want to learn from this guy. Mm -hmm. I started taking in one client, two clients, three clients, and then changing them within a couple of months. And instead of taking me, you know, this four or five years of experimenting on myself, it can take me a lot less time putting it into someone else. So uh, knowing like exactly, oh, what is your goal? Is it strength? Is it losing weight, gaining muscle? What is it exactly? And then I learned from all my mistakes and applied it. And I was still reading more and more and more. And I took an, a certification from an organization called the IFPA. Mm-hmm. It's a personal training certification. And then I bought the ISSA Nutrition and Bodybuilding Specialist. It's, it's like a package, but it's an online course as well. So I would read and keep on reading and keep on watching videos. That's like a daily thing for me ever since I, I started this. Right. And it was just learn, learn and apply, learn and apply. But when I saw the results that I got, not just on myself, but on the people that I trained, mm-hmm. that's when it clicked. It's like, ah, okay, one second. That feeling, mm-hmm. that achievement that you got from this person coming back to you in a couple of months and thanking you, thank you, oh, because of you, I did this. Because of you, right. I did this. It's like, oh, wow, you know what? I love this. I want to take in more. I want to help more people. Yep. So slowly, it was like building up in my head. It's like, you know what? You're really good at this. You know how to communicate with people. You know mm-hmm. how to get into every single person and analyze what, you know, what, what they need and how to help them, you know, jump from one point to another. So it's like, okay, I'm going to keep doing this. So I kept doing this. 2017. I competed again locally and I won my category. I I won the juniors at the time and I won the open class. And I was like, wow, okay, so I really do fit in this. Mm -hmm. I have a I have a high potential in this. All my work is showing and I want to keep pushing further. I want to reach more in the sport. Right. So 2018 comes, I was like, okay, so I won local shows. It's time for me to move on. Let's look for something outside. Hired a new coach locally here. We started prepping, 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 and then we went to a competition in Georgia where I placed uh, third in my first ever, you know, international competition. Wow. I went I went to the judges. They're like, okay, you, it looks like you worked really hard to put on this beautiful, you know, figure. Your symmetry is good. Now we just need to build from there. So, because obviously the sports, the sport itself evolves over, mm-hmm. you know, every year. 
and the standards change. So you need to go by how the standards change and work with it. So right now, what I need is just to put on more mass and more muscle on my frame mm -hmm. in order for me to be successful in the sport. So I kept on competing until 2019, but there was a point that came in the end of 2018 when I was competing. And at the time I had a couple of clients working with me and I was just comparing what I'm doing. Mm. So I was just looking at myself one day, sitting outside the, fa you know, the, the factory and just staring at the sky. And I was just feeling miserable. I was just doing that job just to get paid by the end of the month. So I yeah. can gather this money and just spend it on one or two competitions at the end of the year. Yeah. Right? So I was like, oh man, I'm putting so much time and so much effort into this. And I don't even like my job. I don't look forward to it. I wake up miserable. I sleep miserable. I just look forward for that one hour a day of training to make me feel a slightly happier and try to forget about what I'm doing. So when I was comparing, I was looking, I was like, okay, you're doing this. What is what is what kind of accomplishments were you doing? Okay, you improved machine efficiency, blah blah blah. Because I was working in the operations mm -hmm. at the time, but it just never gave me that satisfaction, it didn't give me that. You know, oh, my purpose is to be here and to improve what I'm doing at my job. But when I was training people and helping them improve, I mm. felt so much more like there's this value that I can give. Right. In a, in a completely different way. So you're achieving things here and here, but it's just giving me a completely different feeling. So I was like, okay, I am putting much less time, much less effort. And even if I put the same time, I just don't feel like I'm putting effort because I love what, what I'm doing. Right. And I had to make a decision. Now here, it's really hard to make this decision because you're forced by the society and you know, family and stuff that, oh, they just teach you one thing. Oh, you need to look for a job with your degree, go with it, keep doing it, mm -hmm. keep improving on it, and that's it. So it just stays here in your mind. And you need to try to push it, try to push it, and then and come to realize, to re realize it with yourself. Like, okay, this is not the only way to do it. Mm -hmm. There are many other, other things outside this bubble that I can do and do better that one, that, than the things that I was doing and be good at it. So why not take that risk? Yep. And at the time, you know, I was, I was following people um, like Gary Vee and uh, influential people and watching mm -hmm. uh, motivation videos and actually listening to them you know made me realize that they, they are right you need to try you need to take a risk mm -hmm. you're still young uh, there's plenty of time for you to make mistakes and realize and i did it without taking <laughs> any permission i just went there i was like okay here's my resignation i didn't think mm -hmm. anything at the time yeah not thinking about money it's it's like okay just do it and then just get yourself out of it mm -hmm. and let everything else work and that's yeah. what happened i i put my resignation down here and i started coaching people taking clients working on social media i kept on competing mm -hmm. and obviously COVID came yeah and we you know we had to stop for a while but i i kept on training yeah i kept on finding a way i kept on looking for gyms that were open i, I used to take the keys of the gym <laughs> and go train by myself close the door go back down and you know no one knows that i was there yeah so i didn't skip one day of training that's all awesome. throughout COVID, and even found a way to train my clients here because uh, I have like a home gym basement mm -hmm. uh, where I do my cardio and abs regularly. So uh, I, I bought my client, clients here. So the work kept on going. So there's always a way. Yeah. And uh, it kept on evolving. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm, I want to keep on competing. I want to keep on taking more clients and I want to perfect what I'm doing because mm -hmm. I love this. So I started my supplement business in 2019, launched it at the start of Corona. Because mm -hmm. it, it all works together. You're either selling a service mm -hmm. that's going to help these people improve, you know, or you're selling a problem, a, a product that's also helping them improve, but in another way. Right. And it's all within that same circle of the fitness industry. So like, okay, because I know this, because I'm willing to work on it and learn more about it and apply it, I decided to take this whole, you know, kind of switch. And we, we reached a point where everything is going smooth. Clients are coming in easily online and both, both mm -hmm. online and on ground. And uh, that's the point where I decided, okay, I want to expand. Mm -hmm. I want to make my own gym mm -hmm. and I want to keep on helping clients in my own environment and do everything the way that I want, the system that I want and uh, take it from there. Yeah. So and and I think is, uh, that's awesome. Go ahead. Now, this is this just the general, you know, mm -hmm. everything. We did go into a, a bit more detail, but, you know, I'm trying to uh, make it as simple as possible. So, No, for sure. And there's a lot of things that I'd like to dive into. But, the, but I think the first one is the ability to adapt and change, right? You started off extremely skinny. I was also the same way. I was always the skinny, fast kid that 
would eat whatever I want and just, you know, run it off pretty much either soccer, basketball, cross country, anything. Yeah. And then when I started lifting, the eating was still there. And then I started building more weight and I did more of a bulk cut routine and I still do that to this day. I know you don't, we'll get into that, but yeah. the, the ability to change from power lifting to bodybuilding, to physique competition, to training, and then supplements and now opening your own gym, it seems like you're not only training your body, but your mind to be able to keep the opportunities open and just keep an open mind to be able to change and pivot in whatever direction is possible. So talk to us yep. a little bit about how you train your mind in order to be able to see those opportunities come up or I guess be open if they present themselves. Okay. So I think it all started when I went outside my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is going back to when I was just working a regular employee, regular job, you know, I was mm -hmm. in, in a comfort zone, you know, I'm just, I'm working, I'm keeping my mouth shut and I'm just waiting for my salary to come by the end of the month because that, that number is shutting me up Yeah. and I'm not being able to think, you know, and obviously they take a lot of energy, a lot of time per day. You, you already know this, man, you, mm -hmm. you have limited capacity of you know, energy and, and thinking to do throughout the day. And you're wasting a lot of it on something that you don't want. Now, yep. I know that there's people who say, oh, yeah, you can do your nine to five and then you have this five to 12 to work on your, your business. Mm -hmm. well, that's that's true. But I was spending most of that time working on building this physique and working on yeah. building myself and reading about the things that I like. So it, it's, And the rest and sleep is part of what I have to do mm -hmm. to be able to recover and grow. So it was, it, it was hard for me to do that. It was hard for me to do anything more than the circle that I was doing because it was mm -hmm. already too much for me. But I think stepping up and actually telling yourself that this isn't the only way and if there's something bothering you, you need to be real with yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to tell yourself, okay, is this really, why, why is it bothering you? You need to listen, sit down with yourself and actually write down yep. what, what, is, what is going on with you. Why are you feeling unhappy? Why are you feeling depressed? Why are you feeling like you want to do this instead of that? And once you, you be real with yourself, no one's going to be able to take that decision but yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you shouldn't be relying on anyone on taking that decision. So at that point, when I decided, oh, I want to quit my job and I want to pursue this career and I want to pursue this, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. When I did that, that was the first everything that I did that was, you know, mentally challenging for me to do because I knew there was going to come. There was consequences that was going to come. Course. Whether it is from, from people around me, from friends, family, especially, they were... Very not supported. They mm -hmm. did not support me at all with this decision. And it took me. It took me a while to adapt with this this change. And when I when I took that decision, I started looking at things in a different way and looking at opportunities in a different way. And um, building up every year by year, facing different challenges with, with different businesses. Because also in, in the mix in between, in 2019, I did start my own uh, honey blend business as well. Mm -hmm. It was a, basically a combination of natural honey with different herbs and spices that work in a specific way, either to cure a certain disease or to help you out with a certain problem or to just give you overall health and well-being. And I worked with that and, you know, the market wasn't really helpful because it's more of an expensive type and it didn't really work well, but it's fine. You know, I took that risk, paid some money. It's fine. What did I learn from it? I put everything, wrote everything down. Oh, I learned this and that. Move on. Let's go. Next, yep. next, next, next big challenge. And with time, just trying different things and seeing on your own, you just come to a realization that, you know, nothing is worth it at the end. You either pass mm -hmm. or you learn. And, you know, there's no kind of, you know, this failure. I hate that word. What do you yeah. mean you fail? Yeah, you don't fail. You learn from what you're doing. You learn from your mistakes. And you keep on getting a more clear vision of what you want to do and what you want to add to your kind of the goals list that you have in mind. And also competing. Mm. Competing is a very, very tough thing to do. People don't realize that going down to going down to very low body fat percentages is very mentally challenging mm -hmm. on your hormones on your energy levels and uh, you need to have this kind of balance and uh, it keeps on testing you right testing how you react uh, how you deal with people you know how you um, how you feel like how are you going to push through those low energy levels what are you going to do about it and that builds your mental toughness. That builds how you think and, and how you react and how to ignore that kind of pain that you're in and keep telling yourself that this is temporary, it's fine. You'll get over it, it's fine. 
So trying these new different experiences and every time trying and learning from it, I think that's the only way. I would have not been the same person I am now if I was still working at the same place, mm-hmm. doing the same thing, the same routine every day. It's just trying different things and learning from them and breathing. It's just with time, it's just, it just changes. Yeah. So, so it wasn't something specific that I was doing. It's just a combination of everything that I was doing. Now a quick word for today's show sponsor. I'm normally not a fan of nice clothes. I like comfort over style, especially because I like being active often. Habits 365 is a brand that does both. The reason I'm excited to partner with them is because their vision is in line with this podcast. Their whole message is to preach consistent improvement by creating and maintaining continuous habits 365 days a year. That sounds exactly like what I like to preach, 1% better every day. It also helps that they promote positivity around important topics like mental health and wellness, which is one of the five categories, as well as social justice and much more. The fact that they employ mostly millennials and are run by two people who are in their 20s, like myself, is an added bonus. If you're interested in supporting the show as well as getting some apparel, feel free to enjoy the code FINANCEZILLA for 15% off online purchases by using the link in the show notes. That's F-I-N-A-N-C-E-Z-I-L-L-A for 15% off online purchases. Guys, water is super important for maintaining physical health, one of the five categories of the Successful Millennials podcast. Doctors always recommend at least eight cups a day, and for every cup of coffee or tea, you should probably add another cup of water. Throwing things like pre-workout, creatine, and the fact that everybody just has different hydration needs based on, you know, their body weight and gender, physical activity, etc. You should probably drink well over that eight, eight cups of water. Me personally, I drink like a gallon, gallon and a half a day. I just love water. I drink it with every meal. I drink it when I work out. I don't drink juices or anything else. That's why I'm excited to partner with The Coldest Water. They make water bottles that can preserve cold water and ice that won't even melt for 36 plus hours. Especially in the summertime heat like now, these bottles that come in different sizes are a great way to keep your water cold when running errands, hiking, or just so that you don't have to keep going to the fridge every now and then. Enjoy a personal code for 10% off on online purchases by going to the link in the bio and using the code FINANCEZILLA. That's F-I-N-A-N-C-E-Z-I-L-L-A. For 10% off online purchases. Now back to the show. Yeah, but I think the biggest thing is the fact that you're writing down, seeking feedback and learning from your mistakes. Because I think I agree, like failure is is a construct that people put in their mind to not take the risk. And I get it because I was also there. But it's only considered a failure if you're not learning from that mistake. If you make the decision and you make a chance, you take a risk and you don't know why it went wrong. Oh, it just turned up against me. Like that's not learning from a mistake you didn't know what you did or what you didn't do in order to write the situation that's when it's to me it's a failure but other than that if you're learning from every mistake you're inevitably going to continue to make them but you'll become a stronger person and that's in any anything in my opinion in gym and business and and trading in the market and everything it's just you have to learn and adapt but I like the way that you said it's it's just a constant change and a constant, you want to dive into all the immersive knowledge. You want to learn about all their articles. You want to go to bodybuilding.com and listen to podcasts and stuff. And, and I'm sure that's where you came across Wim Hof and the breathing, because like you said, it's a lot of mental stress on you uh, to cut. Like you see UFC fighters, they pass out whenever they're trying to do an extreme weight cut, or you see like somebody doesn't have the ability to pose the way they want to, because there's no carbon take, they can't work out as hard and they can't get the pump they need on stage. So exactly. how is your, how did you come across Wim Hof? How did you use that to kind of build up your mental confidence in a way where now that doesn't phase you in competition week? Okay. So I'm just going to add before I talk about Wim Hof, sure. you were mentioning, uh, about how UFC fighters and about how people, when they go on very low and strict diets, mm-hmm. some people, when they do it, they think this is the only way. Yeah. They're like, oh, this is the only way I'm going to do it. And they don't put enough effort to read and try different things. Like every prep I did, it was just different because mm-hmm. I knew, okay, this prep, everything is listed. The whole three months of preparation, what I took, what I ate, wow. how my body weight changes, my, my, my progress videos from week to week, every single thing. 
what went wrong, what didn't go wrong, what kind of you know substances I was using that I did, was not working with me. Mm-hmm. And every time I do something different, I change this up, I change this up, I change the amount of cardio, I change the training techniques, I change I change the training intensity and try different forms of volume intensity and so on. And every prep is different until I got to a point where the last prep I had was just so smooth, so incredibly smooth because I was able to control everything here. Mm-hmm. And I was, you know, when you control this and control the how it, was, it controls how you feel and therefore it will control how you look because, you know, stress is one of the biggest enemies that we have and controlling mm-hmm. it just makes it so much easier because you're like, it's a regular day for me and I'm pushing forward through this extra day because I know the end result is going to be worth it. Mm-hmm. And uh, Wim Hof, I came across it uh, through a friend actually. One of my, you know, he's, he was my training partner back in the day. And he showed me this breathing exercise. He's like, okay. He learned about it when he got COVID at the beginning of this year. Mm-hmm. I previously ran into, not ran into him, like ran into a video of Wim Hof and I was just watching what he was doing and stuff. But I never actually tried any of his techniques. Mm. Uh, so my friend who taught me this technique and sent me the video, he actually did his breathing exercises when he had COVID. Mm-hmm. And he and within a couple of days, it's gone. He went and tested. His whole family had COVID at the same time, mm-hmm. and he was the first person in his family to get out of it as nice. safely as possible. So I, I was shocked. I was like, "What? Are you, are you serious?" I was like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. this is what I did, and it's just going to be a part of my day every single day." So I went in depth about this concept. And I watched his videos, I watched his philosophy, I watched his daily routine. Mm-hmm. You know how he wakes up, he goes and he does this ice bath for 20 minutes or whatever. And then, mm-hmm. and then he drinks, uh, he does his breathing technique first. And then he has his coffee and, you know, and I was just learning. Why mm-hmm. is this guy doing this? And why is he so tough? So I started doing this breathing technique. I started doing it in the morning. As soon as you wake up, you just lay down, do it for 10 minutes. And then you go, you drink your coffee, whatever I do, my cardio. So I just added an extra 10 minutes to my morning routine, which is nothing. Right. But the, the feeling you feel after you do it, you just feel so energized because you flush your body with oxygen as soon as you wake up. It's just insane. You do your cardio, you finish your day, even your whole day feels better. Even your breathing when you're training feels better. You, you, you don't realize that in the first day or two, but with, mm, as time goes by, like, wow, this, this extra 10 minutes really made an impact on me. So I started, then I started watching more of his videos and watching what he thinks about taking different things and, you know, the supplements and, and you know, it, about his routine. But obviously, most of the things that we're doing doesn't apply with him. Mm-hmm. Eating one meal a day is just not going to work with him. So. Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting that, you know, you try something different and something new, you give it a go mm-hmm. and you realize with time how much it impacted your, your, daily, your daily routine. Yeah. So, so from him, I, re- I learned something very important is that you know, don't be afraid to change something. Don't be afraid to try something new and test it out for a while and see if it suits you or not. Mm-hmm. That concept, you know, every time you learn something new like that, it just sticks here. Yeah. And it, it becomes, you know, automatic. So when you come through something and you're like, instead of saying, no, I'm, I'm not interested in it, you're like, oh, let me read about it. Yeah, let, let me, me just let try. Me, let, me, let me just try, okay? And then I'll be the judge of that. Yep. So that's, you know, basically where... Uh, I came across, you know, the breathing technique and I still do it to, to this day. So for, for those people who don't know Wim Hof, this guy is, I'll, I'll have his links in the show note for some of his YouTube videos, but he pretty much goes in with just his boxers and going an ice bath in the middle of Russia and Eastern Europe and the coldest possible thing and just stay there for hours. And it doesn't phase him at all. He's been called the ice man. He just... Sure can do whatever it feels like in any level of cold because he has trained his mind to not feel it. So I definitely want to try his, his technique one time. I'm a little scared, but I want, I want to do it. But for those who haven't done the breathing technique or really don't know what it is, you say it's 10 minutes in the morning and you're laying down, kind of walk us through what you're doing or what you're really thinking about in those 10 minutes. Yeah. Also speaking of the ice bath, I was also doing them regularly Mm -hmm. after I I watched them. And another thing that I was implementing and I've been doing this for a year is I never take hot showers anymore. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, you you kind of miss it, but um, it's, it's it's the same thing, man. It it took me two weeks to adapt to it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Boom. Now I can't take hot showers. I only take hot, cold showers, like the coldest showers. 
and I just, it's, it's, it feels natural for me now. You know how much it helps oh, boosting yeah. your immunity system, and mm-hmm. wow, incredible. Even when it's cold outside, I don't care, man. I just go into yeah. the cold shower, and you know, every time you need to like take, take mm-hmm. a couple of breaths, and then you go in. It's like, okay, now it only takes me what, three seconds to get used to it. Before wow. it used to take me like 30 seconds to get mm-hmm. used to it. And after I was doing that for a long time, when I started doing ice baths, it wasn't as hard. Mm. You know, I went into the ice bath. I was like, okay, this is different. But, you know, I stayed for like 15 minutes the first time I ever did an ice bath. Wow. So, which is not really necessary. Because even Wim Hof, he says, you know, you only need three minutes to get the maximum benefit. But the extra things that he was doing is just, you know, mm-hmm. mentally challenging yourself to force the pain and stay in there. And how right. did I know the difference of, of doing these things is when I tried to do it, you know, I just, I did the breathing technique and I would sit there, you know, probably takes me a minute or two to get used to it. Mm-hmm. And then I just ease into it and then, okay, I calm my mind, I calm my breathing and then I get used to it. That's it. I, and then it's so smooth. You just stay there and you don't care about the cold anymore. Mm. You just stay there and then you feel so good when you finish. It. It's incredible. You have to try this. <laughs> but when my brother, who never did a cold shower, mm-hmm. who never does breathing techniques, tried to get into the um, into the ice bath, he couldn't handle three seconds, man. Three seconds. And he was like, no, try again. No, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm not, <laughs> I'll keep it for you. Okay. I'm not doing this. So anyway, the question was, what was the question? Again? Well, what I'm is the to... breathing technique itself? Oh, what is the breathing technique? Right. So it's basically uh, three rounds, mm-hmm. almost three minutes per round. It includes three phases. The first phase, now obviously you you go with the video that he has on YouTube Mm -hmm. and it guides you through the breathing technique. So you can just close your eyes and just be relaxed and go with the rhythm that he has. Mm -hmm. It starts with 30 uh, breaths in and out. So you do one deep breath, breathe out. And Mm -hmm. you do the same rhythm for 30 rounds. Once you finish, you take all the air out on the last breath you hold it for like 30 seconds and then it increases to 45 seconds after uh, you hold it for 30 seconds and then you stay there until he gives you the cue and then you breathe all the air out for uh, all the air in hold it for 15 seconds and then you go back into that rhythm so you repeat that three times mm-hmm. and this the part where you exhale the air out it increases mm-hmm. i think to 45 seconds or a minute and then you just keep repeating it so once you finish you feel all your body is just fresh the oxygen just went all through the body and you feel a really weird sensation like in your hands and your, you know this tingling sensation mm. so once you're done you feel like your your body's just you know relaxed you feel light then when you open your eyes and you start going back to the regular breath you feel you feel so awake like you, you have you didn't wake up like 10 minutes ago. yeah like it just it oh. wakes you up in, in, in an insane way and then you take a dose of caffeine that's it you're good we're good to go yeah and that's the beauty of it. it's just 10 minutes that's yeah. it so, and that's uh, really all it is just it, small increments that will change your trajectory in small like you don't see it every day you talk about gradual improvement you're talking about small 10 minute increments here or there and that's really exactly. all it takes to make one year later you look back and you're like oh my god i've done so much it's only mm-hmm. because you made small lifestyle changes every day. And it's the consistency. Exactly. You know, I have a friend of mine who taught me something about this, not about the breathing techniques specifically, but he gave me a sheet. Uh, it's called the habit tracker. Mm. So basically you write down the certain habit that you want to implement uh, in your life, whether it's a bad habit that you want to remove or a good habit that you want to increase uh, or add right. into your routine. You just write it down and then you tick every day for 21 days. And every day you just, you know, look at it. You take, you take, and by the end of the minutes, oh, I've been doing this for three weeks. Mm-hmm. And you just, oh, okay, now I'm used to it. Now I can just keep it there and keep going. So it's a really good method. When you write down everything, it makes a huge difference. Oh, okay. Because you see it visually every single day. And it just reminds you that, okay, these are the things that you need to do. Same things mm-hmm. when, with, with anything that you want to do, any type of work. When you write down, okay, I have to do one, two, three, and have this, a task list or a board. It makes a huge difference. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And and you're talking about the consistency and never missing a day, even during COVID, which you're in a country that would like had a curfew and didn't allow things. So that's how like dedicated it is. I think people in America maybe don't realize that because where I live, a month and a half in, we were back open and it's been obviously open since that. And we yeah. didn't really we didn't deal with as many COVID restrictions as, as some other countries did. So it just shows sure. you the, the level of discipline that you have, which is awesome. 
but you have a different style than I do. And I want to talk about how that has worked for you in terms of, we talk about weight cuts. We talked about that earlier. We talked about, I'm a bulker and cutter where I change my body a lot visually because I'm gaining 20, 30 pounds and dropping 30 pounds, like every cycle, which probably isn't as healthy, but you maintain the same lean physique and just add like chiseling. One pound means a lot. Every pound is very integral of where you want to put it. And it's like you're saying, you're sculpting an art. In, exactly. in bodybuilding and physique that I just am not. And obviously a lot of people aren't. What have you seen as a benefit of that? Is it the routine? Does it get boring? How do you keep the same thing consistent year round? Whereas, you know, some other people like to change it up and have that variety. Okay. So we're going to answer this in different ways. So we're going to start with the bulk and cut, you know, uh, theory. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I, I, I used to do that myself. Right. However, I would never bulk on cheat foods. Correct. So I would just eat a lot of calories, a lot more than my body needs. And, you know, I would get chubby. You know, the last bulk, which was, you know, end of last, start of last year, so start of 2020. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I reached 95 kilos and I was, I was chubby. I was big. Yes, I was strong. I was probably more than 15% body fat for sure. But I just, I'm not comfortable and my body just doesn't. It doesn't feel good when it's at, at that body fat level <laughs> because uh, I don't know, man. Just, you know, when you take off your shirt, you look at yourself like, the hell am I doing now? Now, yes, there, there are benefits to that. Mm-hmm. And some people, it doesn't work but to do that. So you need to see and need to try by yourself. For me, it just doesn't work. I have to remain lean. Now, by lean, I mean between 10 to 12, maximum 15% body fat. Now, this level is different from person to person. Some people feel better when they're leaner some people feel better when they're on the higher body fat scale so you need to judge by yourself and see what what is where's that sweet spot that your body feels the most amount of energy best sleep and best recovery everything you need to monitor everything so if you monitor everything and you make sure okay no my body is healthy and it's happy at this point then from that point you maintain you don't go up you don't go down you just maintain it and you stick to the same old calories, you do slight, small increments of increase. And then you find out that instead of gaining, you know, a pound a week, you gain a pound probably in a month or two, but that's lean tissue. So at the end of your, let's say, lean bulk, if you're going to call it like a lean bulk or main gain, it's so much easier for you to drop, you know, the extra fat and water. It's not going to take you as much time as it would if you were on a severe, like big bulk and big cut. Right. So when you do like a huge bulk and then uh, you want to start cutting down, it's going to take you longer. It's going to be more intense. Uh, you're going to have to do a lot more restrictions on yourself in terms of, you know, eating in a severe caloric deficit, increase your cardio drastically. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'm, just, I'm going to give you two comparisons now of when I was prepping for a show after a bulk or after being lean bulk. The first one, you know, took me around 12 to 16 weeks. And mm. by the end of it, I was reaching hour and a half, two hours of cardio depleting myself not eating as much carbs and just i was miserable man yeah. here i was feeling healthy it probably took me six to eight weeks to get ready and completely peeled down to the bone mm. and i felt healthy my strength didn't go down as much because i didn't have to do as much restrictions and i got to a point you probably saw my stories i was mm-hmm. eating cheats every couple of days you know uh, yeah. two weeks during out, competition week <laughs> yeah i mean one week out yeah. two weeks out then one week out i had six cheat meals yeah, it's unheard of. Just, just, just to, <laughs> just to make them people, you know, because at the time we finished a local competition. Mm-hmm. So when I was going and eating, and uh, they were looking at me, you look skin dry, the veins are out, and everything. Oh, you, did you compete in last competition? Like, what do you mean? My competition is in is in two weeks. Like, what do mm-hmm. you mean? Like, yeah, my, I'm competing in you know in a week or two. Why are you eating this? Just tell me your business. Just give it to me. Like, yeah. It, <laughs> And then people would comment, man, on Instagram is crazy. Like, what the hell are you doing? How are you doing this? How is this possible? So this is, you know, the main difference of, you know, if you want to bulk or cut or maintain. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to maintain, you need to be very careful of the percentage body fat that you're holding. Mm -hmm. Because if it's too lean or too low, you're just not going to have, you know, you're not going to take the boxes that I just said, you know, the energy recovery and stuff. So you might not be improving as much as someone who's, on, on a bulk so you need to be very very smart about it but i think doing it lean 
and it's just gonna it's not gonna have that much fluctuation so um, having to be over stage weight by like what 10 pounds 15 pounds that's nothing mm. you know it's just it's just gonna go easily throughout a couple of weeks so it's not gonna take you as much time so i think it's much healthier yes yeah, Especially and I mean, also, mm-hmm. also the war- the wardrobe, man. If you want to wear clothes, it's gonna be different. Mm. I remember because last time, I probably went down six to eight numbers just on my jeans. Wow, which is huge. Mm-hmm. So uh, it doesn't make sense to be in that kind of you know fluctuation. Yeah, I mean, if you're able to build the discipline and maintain it, then more power to you. For for me, I feel like I'm I have more legs than uh, I would like, in all honesty. So that's why, like for me, 17 is normal, or that's like really really good percent body yeah. fat for me. But but yeah, to have to maintain a 10 to 12 year round, that's awesome. And and obviously your size is still there, which is which is really good. Yeah, but, I mean it, it is challenging, and you yeah. talked about discipline, so which is mm-hmm. the next point I was gonna say. But anyway, you were saying. No, no, I was just about to ask you, how do you keep the discipline year round and not miss a day when there's days? I I know there's going to be days you don't want to go, regardless of how how much you love the gym, regardless of how much you love the things you do. There's going to be days where you just don't have the energy, you don't have the strength, you don't have the passion. And that's where the discipline comes in the most, in my opinion. How do you train that piece and and force yourself, no matter what, at all costs to go? Okay, so... um... Now, this applies for me year round. Okay. I don't feel the need to do any of the things that I'm doing. I, I don't feel like I'm forced to do anything that I'm doing. As a matter of fact, if I miss a meal, one meal, I would punish myself. Right. I would like stop. But how could you miss this meal? <laughs> I would stop. If I had a meal and I was on my way to something and I was mm-hmm. driving, I would take out the Tupperware and start eating. Yeah. If it was like a, a meal that is hard to, to eat while driving, I would pull over, eat my meal, then I'd continue my, my way. I just, it, it's just structured. It's just part of my day. My day is structured around my meals, around the mm-hmm. time I go to the gym, around my clients. My day is structured that way. And it came to a point that it's hard for me not to do it. Mm. It's hard for me not to do my morning cardio. It's hard for me to skip the gym. Now, obviously, there's days, like you said, that you don't feel like you're going to the gym. I never have those days. I only have days where I feel tired that I have Mm -hmm. to listen to my body and tell it, okay, so today I think you need more recovery. You need rest. It's fine. Take a day off because that day off is going to be beneficial for you. It's not that you skip the gym. Mm. And yes, you might have those days, but it all depends on, it depends on you. Cause you know, I realized like in different, in different, let's say time frames, when there's different stresses and different things that you're working on, it directly impacts how you think and it impacts, you know, your energy throughout the week. And therefore it might impact your, your training or, you know, wanting to go train or not. But when you get so obsessed, I've reached a point where I'm so obsessed with this. And obviously this is not for everyone. Yeah, of course. I've been doing this religiously since i started so even when i was um, still in the powerlifting days i would never go outside my house without my meal never if i was going to a lounge or going to a club whatever at the time i would still get my meal and i would keep it in the car it's fine if i was going to a wedding and i was on a diet I would go outside, sit in the car, eat my meal. Wow. I don't care. Yeah, that, that bad. <laughs> there was something in the buffet that doesn't work with me. Now, obviously, I'm way too way too mm-hmm. strict. And I could work around it. And I can find another way. I just don't want to. For mm-hmm. me, I don't I don't want to take that risk. I just, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Even when I go travel and I go on vacation, I have to find a way. I have to take my meals now. If I'm going to the beach, I, my meals are with me. I don't yeah. care. So it's it's for me it's the opposite. It's um, it's hard for me not to do this anymore. Anyway. It's hard for me to to cheat. If I'm cheating now, which I'm doing regularly, mm-hmm. I'm doing it because it's part of my plan. Right. Okay. Because I need the extra calories because my body is burning too much. But it's not because I want to. Mm. I don't do things because I want to. Now different people need to deal with them in different ways. For me, I've been doing the same chicken, the same meat, the same everything all throughout the year. Mm-hmm. But I never get bored of it. That's just me. Yeah. I got to a point, I got used to it. I can't remember the last day I didn't eat oatmeal and eggs for breakfast. I, I can't remember a day. That's been like this for years now. Yeah. Years. So it's just reached a point like that's it. You know, there's no other way to do it. But obviously, you need, when, when I'm working with clients, I tend to use more of a flexible approach. Mm-hmm. If they can do what I'm doing, that's great. Yeah. If they can do 90%, then I'll manage the 10%. If they can do 70%, I'll manage the 30%. Mm-hmm. So there, there are other ways of doing it. 
to be flexible and you know hit the same amount of calories per day yeah. and still achieve the same results there isn't one way to reach it but for me it's you know i'm always when i'm eating i know someone out there is eating his meals i can't skip mm-hmm. one someone yeah. out there is training harder than me so when i'm at the gym and people think i'm psycho because i'm not mm-hmm. usually like this when i'm at the gym i'm just like, <laughs> focused in my own bubble i don't yeah. even look at my face but you know when someone took a video of me one I was like, oh my God, that's how I look when I'm training. Yeah. <laughs> so serious. And like, you know, yeah. I want to kill someone. And yeah. um, You got to get in that uh, zone, though. You got to get in that way. zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, man. I can't. Because I have to think, I'm, I've been competitive ever since, you know, I was in school. Because I, mm. I, I think I told you that I used to play basketball as well. Yep. I was very competitive, but I just I just didn't find myself working with team, team sports, more of like single sports. <laughs> yeah for sure i mean it's it's the competition the competitive aspect that forces you to continue and get better and the ability to be flexible when you're coaching others i think is something that some people listening will be like well i do want to get in better shape i don't want to live a a classic physique bodybuilder lifestyle and that's totally fine like there's so many different plans you can do there's so many different ways that you can get into shape in whatever shape you want but as long as you have the vision and you work at it consistently, and you have some guidance from people who have done it yourself, either by doing the research yourself, listening to podcasts, reading, you know, articles like you did, or reaching out to a guy like yourself, and learning from them and having them coach you either online or in person. And that's the way in that's the, the three stages to me in order to get better. And yeah. for those people who, who are interested in working out and are interested in getting better, but don't have all the tools, don't want to really do the research and, and they don't really care about the science aspect of it. They just want somebody to tell me, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to get better? How can they reach out to you so that they can work with you and get better at it? Um, so um, normally just uh, Instagram. Mm-hmm. So, so people send me direct messages on Instagram and I'll tell them to fill out my link. There's a link in my bio, which is a Google form. And it has a couple of basic questions that I need before I do like a 10 minute call with every mm-hmm. client or every potential client. And then from there, I would see if they're suitable with my plans or not. And then we'll take it from there. So uh, social, basically Instagram. And what's your Instagram handle? I'll put it in the show notes, but for those listening. Hamza dot Nice. Yeah, man. Well, I th- uh, go ahead. I think because I changed it many times. So <laughs> I think that's probably I'm trying to find a better name. It's just not working. It's all good. Hey, you can't sometimes keeping it 100% direct with your name and, and what, you, what you're doing is fitness. Yeah. I definitely have that link in the show notes. And I do hope people reach out because I think the hardest part about getting a workout plan is having somebody to keep you accountable. We both, when we started working out, worked out with people and eventually has morphed into I work out alone. Now you work out with different people, but getting that accountability in the beginning is extremely important and the knowledge base of what to do. And obviously yeah. your coaching provides both of those. So I, I hope people reach out and, and continue to learn more, man. Whenever I'm in Jordan, hopefully we will get a workout in and uh, oh, continue yeah. to check your journey, man. Hopefully you'll be in my new gym. So uh, that's going to be good. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Well, best of luck on your new uh, ventures as well, Hamza. Thank you for joining. Thank, thank you so much, man. Thank you for your time. And thank you for having me on. Of course. That concludes another episode of the Successful Millennials Podcast. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode and which tip or trick you picked up on that you'll implement after listening to today's episode. Please don't forget to leave a like or subscribe on whichever podcast streaming platform you're listening to right now. Obviously, we're on all of them. And let me know what topics you'd like to learn more on or ask a guest on. And my email is going to be in the show notes. It's financezilla at gmail.com. That's the best way to reach out to me. If you have Instagram and you prefer to reach out there, I'm also quite active and I'll respond to DMs. It is at financezilla. Again, both of those will be in the show notes. Now, if you're wondering on how I got to where I'm at, where I was able to retire from corporate and kind of do this as well as invest and trade in the stock market, and you would like to learn more, kind of take control of your finances and therefore take control of your life and being able to do what you want to do, being financially independent, reach out to me via either of those ways and ask for that 30-minute free strategy consultation session. The link again will be in the show notes for that and we can talk about how to how to live the life you want to live and make money doing it as well as be comfortable and happy. That's I think the goal of everything That's the reason why I started this podcast and why I do this consulting business. So reach out, let me know if I can help and apply via the link in the show notes until then. 
Talk to you guys next week.